السلام عليكم hello everybody today we will continue our video about ultrasound assessment of acute female pelvic pain case 1 a 34 years old woman with a history of kidney stones presents to the emergency department with left lower quadrant abdominal pain and flank pain no stones are seen at computed tomography Asymmetric enlargement of the left ovary is seen at ultrasound. The result of a pregnancy test is negative. What is the diagnosis? Ultrasound findings Heterogeneous well circumscribed mass with less like internal echoes, avascularity of the mass, tenderness during direct compression. The answer is hemorrhagic cyst of the left ovary. Hemorrhagic cyst. It occurs in women of menstrual age. May be asymptomatic and febrile with a normal white blood cells count. May be or may not have a history of ovarian cysts. Pathogenesis. Acute hemorrhage into a follicular or corpus luteum cyst. Massive hemoglobinium may result. It can cause syncope with or without hypotension. Signs and symptoms Abrupt onset of severe pain in the pelvis or lower abdomen Rapid change in the imaging appearance of the cyst may be due to clotting Most hemorrhagic cysts resolve within two menstrual cycles Ultrasound findings Cystic structure with a well-defined wall may have internal fluid debris or fluid fluid levels Retracting clot, no flow, thin, smooth, avascular, fibrin strands, fish net or lace like pattern with no flow. If hemoproteinium is present, a pregnancy test is crucial to differentiate a ruptured hemorrhagic cyst from a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Short interval ultrasound follow up examination are recommended for lesions larger than 5 cm in diameter or lesions with an unusual appearance. Case 2 A 44 years old woman presents to the emergency department with exacerbation of asthma, left lower quadrant abdominal pain, nausea and constipation. What is the diagnosis? Ultrasound findings Enlarged globular uterus, ill-defined endometrium, myometrial cysts. The answer is adenomyosis. Adenomyosis. It occurs in 20 to 30 percent of women, most often multi-bars women. Basophysiology. Endometrial gland migration into the myometrium. Process is often diffuse but may be focal. Subendometrial cysts may be present. Signs and symptoms Chronic pelvic pain Soft, tender, enlarged uterus Menorrhagia, dysmenorrhea or infertility Grayscale ultrasound findings Enlarged globular uterus Loss of endometrial myometrial junction Ill-defined echogenic areas in the myometrium Swiss cheese-like appearance created by myometrial cysts 1 to 5 mm in diameter Echogenic striations within endometrium and hypoechoic striations within the myometrium Color Doppler ultrasound findings No mass effect on the vessels Cysts are easily differentiated from blood vessels Ultrasound is the imaging method of choice, but if findings are equivocal or fibroids are present, a magnetic resonance imaging evaluation is recommended. Case 3 A 23 years old woman presents to her gynecologist with a constant dull abdominal pain ongoing for a week, accompanied by a vaginal odor and brown vaginal discharge. The patient had undergone placement of an intrauterine device 
four months earlier. What is the likely diagnosis based on the ultrasound and CT findings shown? Ultrasound findings, echogenic linear material outside the uterus. CT findings, linear metallic structure outside the uterus, indicative of intrauterine device displacement. The answer is extrauterine malposition of IUD. IUD malposition, pathophysiology, migration of a contraceptive device from the endometrial cavity into the bowel, ovary, or bladder. It may be asymptomatic. Signs and symptoms. Pelvic pain, which is generalized or localized. Cervical motion tenderness. Irregular bleeding, pain during menses. Infection and ectopic pregnancy. Transvaginal ultrasound findings of normal IUD position. Echogenic object within the endometrial cavity crossed the bars in the fundus. IUD may be echogenic, producing a linear bright region with or without an acoustic shadow. If the IUD is not seen at ultrasound, evaluation with another imaging method is needed. Pelvic radiography may be helpful for locating the IUD. These are grayscale ultrasound images show normal IUD position. Case 4 A 19 years old woman presents with a two-day history of continuous middle and left lower quadrant pain without fever or shells. What is the likely diagnosis? based on the ultrasound findings shown. Ultrasound findings The left ovary is avascular, enlarged and displaced toward the midline with multiple subendothelial cysts. The right ovary is normal in position and appearance. The answer is left ovarian torsion. This is a surgical emergency. Ovarian torsion Half of cases occur before menarche. Basophysiology. Ischemia of the ovary and or fallopian tube due to twisting of the vascular pedicle may lead to hemorrhagic infarction. Signs and symptoms. Acute abdominal pain may be intermittent with torsion and detorsion. Nausea, vomiting and adenixial tenderness. Low grade fever and or a mildly elevated white blood cells count may or may not be present. Ultrasound is a diagnostic imaging method of a choice. Grayscale ultrasound findings Unilateral enlarged ovary often in midline position. Peripheral subendothelial cysts. Heterogeneity of the central stroma. Fallopian tube thickening. Lead point for torsion, for example, cyst or tumor, may or may not be seen. Pelvic free fluid and or hemoprotoneum. Color Doppler ultrasound findings. Weirly poor sign due to twisted pedicle. Ovary may show tardus barvas waveform. Decreased or absent diastolic flow. Absent venous flow. Increased flow during detorsion. Case 5. A 38 years old woman presents with progressively worsening left lower abdominal quadrant and suprapubic pain. What is the likely diagnosis based on the ultrasound findings shown? Ultrasound findings Heterogeneous hypocoic solid intrauterine mass. The location of the mass correlated to the region of the pain. The answer is Necrotic uterine fibroid Necrotic fibroid Pathophysiology is benign smooth muscle neoplasm. Fibroids increase in size and number with increasing patient age and involute after menopause, often asymptomatic. Signs and symptoms depend on Number 1. Type and location of fibroid if pedunculated, there is torsion or ischemia. 
if submucosal there is abnormal uterine bleeding if corneal there is tubal obstruction number two size and growth fast growth of fibroid depletes blood supply leading to fibroid degeneration and necrosis anterior position may lead to urinary urgency posterior position may lead to constipation number three if patient is pregnant fetal loss premature labor and malpresentation may result ultrasound is the imaging method of a choice gray scale ultrasound findings of necrotic fibroid is well-defined focal mass hypoechoic to myometrium bore through transmission with acoustic shadow and heterogeneous echo texture color doppler ultrasound findings blood flow from periphery to center wheel spoke like pattern low resistance waveform pedunculated lesions with bridging vessels connected to the uterus case 6 a 38 years old woman undergoing therapy with colomiphene citrate for infertility presents with abdominal pain what is the likely diagnosis based on the findings shown ultrasound findings bilateral enlarged ovaries multiple large cysts with evidence of hemorrhage large amount of free fluid in the pelvis and extending superiorly ultrasound findings and clinical history are diagnostic the answer is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome pathogenesis it is most commonly iatrogenic from use of ovarian stimulant drug therapy for infertility it can also occur spontaneously in pregnancy ovarian enlargement with extravascular accumulation of exudates signs and symptoms weight gain ascites pleural effusion intravascular volume depletion oligoria pain nausea vomiting ultrasound findings number one distended luteal cysts of various size number two wheel spoke like appearance of ovarian stromal tissue produced by cysts surrounding central ovarian tissue number three in cyst rupture debris retractile clot and fluid fluid levels number four in torsion asymmetric blood flow magnetic resonance imaging is necessary if the ovaries are asymmetric in size and an underlying tumor is suspected Case 7. A 28 years old woman presents three weeks postpartum with right lower quadrant pain and tenderness. Ultrasound demonstrated a normal uterus and ovaries. What is the likely diagnosis based on the CT findings shown? CT findings A 5 mm diameter filling defect within the inferior vena cava. Enlarged right ovarian vein with a central filling defect extending to the level of the right ovary. The answer is ovarian vein thrombosis. Ovarian vein thrombosis. Basophysiology. It is rare entity. It is associated with ascending postpartum ovarian vein thrombophlebitis. Most cases occur within 10 days after delivery. It may occur after pelvic surgery. Signs and symptoms. Fever, right lower quadrant abdominal pain, palpable tubular abdominal mass. CT is a diagnostic imaging method of a choice. CT findings, enlarged ovarian vein, Low attenuation filling defect within central lumen, enhancing wall, it can extend into the inferior vena cava. Ultrasound findings, tubular mass lateral to aorta or inferior vena cava. 
Variable echogenicity of the thrombus. Partial or absent flow within the vein.